हेलो एवरी वन माई नेम इज डॉक्टर राज दंडेकर आई ग्रेजुएटेड फ्रॉम आई आई टी मद्रास इन ट्वेंटी सेवेंटीन विथ अ बैचलर्स इन मैकेनिकल इंजीनियरिंग आफ्टर दैट आई वेंट टू एम आई टी मैसेच्यूसेट्स इंस्टीट्यूट ऑफ टेक्नोलॉजी टू परस्यू माई पी एच डी आई ऑप्टेन माई पी एच डी इन आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस आफ्टर फाइव ईयर्स ऑफ डूइंग रिसर्च आई एम मेकिंग दिस वीडियो टू टेल यू ऑल द इम्पॉर्टेंस ऑफ रिसर्च इन बिल्डिंग योर मशीन लर्निंग प्रोफाइल I strongly believe that anyone can transition to machine learning whether you are in any stage of your career right now whichever domain or whichever field you are in you can transition to machine learning In this video I am going to tell you one common mistake which I see candidates make in this transition and that common mistake is completely neglecting research and not realizing the role which research can play in building your ML profile I will explain to you through this video how having a strong research profile can improve your profile by 5 to 10 times lead to more jobs in the machine learning space if you are planning to apply for grad school it will have a huge amount of benefit in your application I believe this plot which I have made illustrates the entire point of this video uh when students start their machine learning journey they typically have toy kaggle projects and the journey looks like this students go online they look for some course some free course they look at the course syllabus and it typically looks like this they have linear classifiers li non linear classifiers neural networks unsupervised learning reinforcement learning etc that's great as you are working through these projects students or as you are working through this course students do projects at the end of different modules many of these projects are already present on kaggle for example here is a very common initial project which students do titanic machine learning from disaster students click on the project which has the maximum number of upvotes you go to this page where the entire code is already pre written for you you can then later open it in a google collab notebook which looks like this you can make some tweaks add your title and run this entire code what i have seen many students do is that after they run let's say this project and one or two more other kaggle projects they add it on their resume let's say this is my resume and i only have this much in the data science project section i have run two projects on kaggle the titanic survival project and the housing price prediction and i put it over here developed and trained a decision tree classifier achieved an accuracy of 90% similarly for the housing price prediction adding these to your resume adds very little impact in fact it's almost adding zero impact to your resume and the primary reason is because you have not done anything new toy kaggle projects are not unique and everyone has these projects literally everyone in the world who is learning machine learning can go to this kaggle notebook they can open it in google collab they can make some changes and they can run it and they can add it on their resume it does not add too much value to your resume at all if a job interviewer looks at these projects they can think that you might have just copied these projects and run it quickly on your machine how can they be sure that you are a serious machine learning engineer so the first mistake is do not stop at these projects do not stop at these toy kaggle projects don't add these projects to your resume and think that now you have made this transition doing these projects doing these toy kaggle projects is a good first step but never stop there go to the second step and that second step is doing independent projects of your own these independent projects are projects which you have designed you have conceived of and you are passionate about for example let's say i have a project on post detection in which i will play a multiplayer game in python using post detection i'll use the library's media pipe and open cv let's say i'm so passionate about this project that i am in a video like this so i code this video uh video player game in python i host it on youtube and i also make a github repository for it this conveys passion and this conveys enthusiasm about the project this is an independent project which you have on github and you can add this on your resume like this so now my resume has improved just having these two kaggle projects is not enough so now i have added two independent github projects on my resume i can write much more about these and i can also link my github repository to the project 
remember that linking a github repository adds a huge amount of value because it conveys that you are uh, active in the open source machine learning community independent github projects convey passion they convey that you have the ability as a candidate to start a new machine learning project and to take it to completion the second mistake which candidates make is that they think they have done independent projects so that's it now they should apply for job interviews remember that independent projects add more value they are new or novel so they are much better than adding toy kaggle projects but still you should not stop here the final barrier which you need to cross which will have a huge amount of uh, impact on your profile in fact the highest impact on your profile is having research publications if you have a machine learning research publication on your profile it has the highest value and it conveys that you are a very serious machine learning person why because doing research is hard doing research requires patience and time not many students who transition to machine learning have this much patience and not many students do research so if you have done a research project and if you have a publication out of that project it will truly set you apart as a very serious machine learning candidate for example uh, if i have a paper like this this is the paper which i had during my phd uh, it's a machine learning paper which is about 15 to 16 pages and published in a reputable journal it adds a huge amount of value to your uh, profile in fact this is exactly what i did when i uh, made my final resume while doing my phd i added a publication section so having the project section is good i also had the data science project section but if an interviewer or the grad school admission committee goes through your resume and they see this publication section and they see that you are the first author or the second author in these papers it is amazing because it conveys the person that you are a serious machine learning person you can start a research project and take it to the publication level and not many people will have this i am sure that if you have research publications on your profile you will definitely get more interviews and your admissions profile will stand out to the admissions committee in grad school applications in the last part of this video i want to tell you very systematic steps in which you can develop your research profile and start having a machine learning publication even when we look at publications there are actually three types the first type is having an original research article the second type is literature review papers and the third is just archive preprint original research article is when you design something completely new which no one has worked on before and you publish this paper so for example the paper which i showed you over here this is an original research paper because i designed this top i designed this research story and i published independently the second type of paper is a literature review paper what you do in a literature review paper is you don't do any new results what you do is you look at the literature what people have worked on previously and where is this field evolving and you write a comprehensive survey regarding this even well written literature review papers carry a lot of weightage for example here is a literature review paper on the advantages and disadvantages of artificial intelligence and machine learning this paper has 210 citations now although it's a review paper it has 200 citations which means it's helping fellow researchers the way literature review papers help fellow researchers is that uh, they can just go to this one paper and look at what is happening in this field instead of reading a bunch of papers so even literature review papers carry a lot of value in terms of research profile and the final uh, section is archive preprint a preprint is something which uh, is not peer reviewed but if you want to get something out there in the open in a quick manner people generally upload it to archive for example uh, before publishing my paper in this journal i have uploaded it to archive so here you can see the archive version of my paper so that people have immediate access to it remember that journal submission takes a long time so if you want people to get quick access to your paper you can publish it in archive it's not peer reviewed so the value of the archive publication is not as high as an original research article or a literature review paper so the original research article carries the highest value followed by the literature review paper followed by the archive preprint but the time taken also is proportional so the time taken for an original research article is generally 1 to 1 and 1/2 years 
good literature review papers can be written in three to six months and if you just want to convert your course project into an archive preprint that can be done even in one month the best if you are in college right now uh, the best way to start doing research is meeting a professor literally just go and knock the door of the professor and start up and ask the professor do you have a research project on which i want to start working just go and start from scratch this is exactly what i did in the second year of my college and that led to a publication uh, which eventually got me into mit and stanford don't fear uh, whether the professor will say no i don't have any experience in research it's fine just go knock on the door of the professor and ask however if you are in an environment where you are not in an academic setting or if your university is, does not have access to good professors or good research collaborations you can email professors and uh, you can ask for research collaborations remember before you send an email you definitely need to have a portfolio website this is my portfolio website this is the portfolio website of my close friend dr shridat here you can see that the way he has constructed his portfolio website is amazing because it tells much more than just resume in your portfolio website you can tell about the research which you have done you can add a bunch of images you can even add uh, a media section where you can add videos you can of course attach your resume over here you can add a section on gallery extracurricular activities etc the reason it's so important to make a portfolio website is that in one click the professor can see exactly what you have done so this reduces the length of the email which you send to professors uh so there is also a particular pattern to write a sample email to professors so for example the email should not be very long keep it crisp and keep it short for example here is the sample email which we generally give to candidates so hope this email finds you well please allow me to introduce myself then write mention your name then show some interest in the work which the professor has published for that you need to read the professor's work in a lot of detail professors can really make out if you are if you are not a serious candidate so tell the professors that i read your paper and i found it very nice and uh, a particular result really fascinated me then tell them that uh, how your work is related to what the professor is working on you can tell them that i am greatly interested in this field and i have worked on several research problems or several projects in this field now here instead of writing i did this i did this i did this just attach a link to your portfolio website and tell them to have a look at your portfolio website this is why having the website helps so much and finally you can tell them that i would be very interested in having in having a meeting with you uh, i am open to working in person or remote or on a funded or non funded research internship and then you can also attach your resume please make the email as crisp as this make your portfolio website uh indicate your interest in the professor's research in the professor's group draft this email and send it across to multiple professors the rate of response from the professors is less so the only way to get good collaborations is to email 20 to 30 professors finally in conclusion i would like to take you back to this figure which we started with please please do not neglect the value of research if there is one takeaway which i have learned from my phd experience at mit is that research plays a huge amount of role don't just stop at step number 1 or don't just stop at step number 2 go to step number 3 and try to have research publications email professor start projects with them if you don't have access to professor start yourself working on literature review papers thank you so much everyone and i'll see you in the next video